Hi, I'm Chef Tony Matassa with BBQGuys.com. Today we're making something for all you pizza lovers out there. Now I went through all my old recipes to see what we already have done and what needs to be done for you pizza lovers and somehow, and I don't know how you guys didn't comment in, but somehow we never made deep dish pizza. Well today we settled that by putting together a deep dish pizza, which I'll show you how to do, make the sauce and everything, and we'll throw it together and bake it in our Lynx Napoli pizza oven. We'll begin by making the dough because it takes a little bit longer to rise a deep dish dough than a standard pizza. Let's get started. Begin by combining your dry ingredients. Here I'm adding some bread flour, semolina flour, and sea salt into a mixing bowl. In this bowl, I have some warm mineral water. Whisk in a little bit of honey, and follow that with some active dry yeast. Set the mixture aside, and while the yeast activates, add some corn oil to some butter that is just melted. This will give the crust that great buttery richness that people love about deep dish. After a few minutes, the yeast should be activated and you can whisk in the butter oil mixture. Follow that with the dry ingredients. Once you have everything mixed up, Add an additional two cups of bread flour. This will bring the dough to the right consistency. Deep dish dough is a bit different from thin crust pizza dough. You really don't have to knead it longer than two to three minutes. I like to just knead mine briefly in the mixing bowl. Then form a ball. Coat the bowl with a little olive oil and your dough is ready to rise. At this point, you can cover your dough and set it in a warm spot for about two hours to rise or optionally, and it's what I'll be doing today, place it in the refrigerator covered for either overnight or up to two days. and It will really develop a lot of rich flavor and texture. If you, if you have the time, I highly recommend it. But it's your pizza, so do it however you'd like. Right now, while that's happening, I'll put together a red wine reduction onion marmalade that we'll be using as one of the toppings for the deep dish pizza. For the reduction, pour a cup and a half of red wine into a saucepan and let it simmer on medium low until reduced by about half. While that finishes up, throw some thinly sliced onion rings into a pan with some butter and season with a little salt and sugar. Now just pour the reduction over the onions, toss to coat, and pop it in a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes. When they look caramelized and delicious like this, they're ready to set aside to top our pizza. Finally, we'll put together one of the key ingredients to this recipe, and that's our sauce. And this won't take but about 10 minutes. Over medium heat, pour in some crushed, fire-roasted tomatoes, a little fresh garlic paste, and season with some coarse salt, sugar, and a little black pepper. And to me, it wouldn't be pizza sauce without some freshly chopped basil. Let this simmer for five minutes to reduce and thicken up. Then you can shut off the burner and stir in some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. It's time to build this monster pizza. Here I have a 15 inch cast iron skillet. Oil the bottom well with some corn oil so the pizza will be easy to remove once baked. Be careful not to oil the sides of your pan. It could cause the dough to fall. Place your dough in the center of the pan and begin pressing it out, working from the center towards the edge of the pan. You want the bottom of the crust to be between an eighth and a fourth of an inch thick. Then you can start working it up the sides. Just sort of press and bring the dough up the sides, allowing at least a half inch from the top of the pan. This will keep the crust from burning. I also like to press dents into the base of the crust to help the center bake more evenly. We'll begin with cheese. Today we have some sliced mozzarella and provolone. Start layering in the cheese with a little overlap of each slice. You wouldn't want any square inch not to have full coverage. That would be a crime. After establishing a good foundation of cheese, spread on a thin layer of pizza sauce. For an essential deep dish ingredient, in my opinion, we'll add some Italian sausage. After you add a thin layer, press it all down so that we can fit the most toppings possible on our pie. Next, I'll add the caramelized onions from earlier and some sliced, fire roasted bell peppers. Again, lightly press them down and add some fresh baby spinach, which of course will allow you to get your pizza vegetable serving for the day. Now finish your pizza in true Chicago style by coating the top with the rest of your sauce. This keeps the toppings from drying out and burning. 
since deep dish takes longer to bake than a regular pizza. Finally, I like to finish the top of mine with a layer of grated Parmesan cheese. With my Lynx pizza oven preheated to around 500 degrees, it's time to get the pizza in the oven. Once your pizza's in, reduce the temperature to between 425 and 450 degrees. Keep an eye on your pizza while baking. Mine has been baking for about 20 minutes and is starting to brown up a good bit around the crust. If this happens to you, don't freak out. Just tin it with some foil until the last five minutes of bake time. All right, it's been about 40 minutes. I'll just remove the foil and let it bake uncovered for the next five minutes. I can't wait to eat this. Just look at that crispy caramelized Parmesan cheese. Let this molten hot pizza cool for about 10 minutes. I know it's hard to wait, but it'll make the removal and slicing a lot easier. Finally, it's time to dig in. That slice of deep dish was like a little slice of heaven. I mean, finishing it off with a good bottle of wine and a nice cigar, it's almost like truly being in Chicago. Thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. Check back often to see our latest videos or subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Chef Tony Matassa, and remember, at bbqguys.com, we smoke the competition.